All right, so this video is about functional groups. Functional groups are the business ends of organic molecules and where to find them. Um, what this really means is we're going to go through some structures and I'm going to give you some examples of how to identify and then name particular functional groups. Um, you'll have seen already that um, there's quite a variety of functional groups in organic chemistry from alcohols to amines to esters to ethers to alkenes, alkynes. Uh, there are all sorts of different types. And so it's important that you guys can put the names to the structures and the structures to the names and be able to take a structure like this and recognize what's there. All right. So this is aspirin. All right. This is acetaminophen, more commonly known is Tylenol. And let's just take a look and see if we can figure out what functional groups are present. All right. Now as far as we're concerned, functional groups are anything that are not just straight old alkanes. So um, standard CH single bonds, we're not concerned about those. All right. Those are the simplest functional group, but we're looking at everything that's not an alkane. So let's start off with aspirin. And hopefully you can see, well, there's a, there's a bunch of things going on here, but there's this ring with three double bonds in it. This is a functional group all of its own. This carbon with an O and an OH coming off it, that is another functional group. This system here of a CH3, the carbon oxygen, oxygen here, this kind of overlaps with, with this one, but this is a functional group as well. So we have three different functional groups in this molecule. It's, in, it's important to be able to recognize them and then to be able to name them. All right, so this guy is a benzene ring. All right, you might also call it an aromatic ring. Uh, so benzene ring. This functional group, a carbon and another carbon with uh, this COOH, you'll see this functional group written like this sometimes, and I'm sure you've seen this before. Dash just means whatever the rest is coming off it. That is a carboxylic acid. All right, the simplest of those is ethanoic acid or acetic acid that you'll find in vinegar. And then this functional group here, you can see it looks kind of similar to the carboxylic acid, but not exactly. This with a carbon and then a C double bond O and another oxygen and another carbon, that is a functional group known as an ester. Esters typically are volatile compounds that have very sweet smells. So you'll see a lot of esters in perfumes. Esters tend to be responsible for the smell of fruits, uh, bananas, apples. They all have a particular smell, oranges. All right, so those are the three functional groups in aspirin. Now, when you look here at Tylenol, you should see, well, first of all, I got a benzene ring again, all right? So benzene ring we have there. And then you'll also notice there's a group over here that looks pretty similar to this one. The stuff coming off this carbon's a, a little different, but this is still a carboxylic acid. All the rest of the carbons in here are just alkanes. So these are the two functional groups that we need to know about. Now what if we go to some molecules that are more complicated, such as these. The more complex the molecule, the more likely it is that you have more functional groups. All right, so we're going to draw them and highlight all of them. First of all, we got another benzene ring. All right. Now we have this guy right here, which sort of looks like um, these guys in that there's a C double bond O. But there's an amine here or an, or an NH2. This makes this functional group something called an amide. So we already know about our benzene. And what about this oxygen? Well, the oxygen is connected between two carbons. So again, these, these overlap a little bit. An oxygen connected between two carbons has a particular name. It's called an ether. A lot of people get the terms ether and ester confused because they both have oxygen. But if you remember, an ester has a C double bond O, an ether does not. All right. Now here we have another functional group with an oxygen in it. 
This is one of the first functional groups that people see. This is an alcohol. And then we have another functional group here that's a nitrogen connected to carbons. This is similar to this guy. This is an, this is an amide. This is an amine. The amine doesn't contain the acetyl of one dough. The amide does. Okay, that's all the functional groups in this compound. So now we're going to go over to this one. Now notice that we've got another benzene ring. In fact, we've got another two benzene rings. Circle them both. Now what about these guys? Because these two look kind of similar. Well, there's a carbon, oxygen, carbon. The fact it's connected to a benzene ring doesn't matter. This is its own separate functional group. Now this guy up here was carbon, oxygen, carbon. So this is another one of whatever that was, and that was an ether. This is exactly the same thing. So that's an ether, and there is an ether. Now notice here, there we had a, a group with a C double bond O, and that was an amide. That had a nitrogen on the end. This C double bond O had an OH. This C double bond O had an O connected to a carbon. What about a C double bond O that's just connected to two other carbons. So we've got this here. This is a functional group called a ketone. This one right here. Now we've, we've done the benzene rings already. The only other one that we've got to do here is this nitrogen. Anytime we have a nitrogen connected to either carbons or hydrogens, just like we have here, we have an amine. So this one is an amine. That one is also an amine. So anytime you're looking through organic compounds, you can figure out the functional groups in all of them. You just got to have an idea about what each of those functional groups looks like and how to identify them. All right, that's the basics of, of uh, finding functional groups.